What's going on? Jeb here. And in today's video, we got a great show lined up for you because over the weekend, Bitcoin has done some fascinating things. For one, it tried to bounce off of around $55,000, which you guys saw came in around Thursday or Friday of last week. But in this video, in this stream, and for this week, we're going to be trying to figure out, is the bottom for Bitcoin finally in or does Bitcoin need to have another leg down? We're going to be looking at some arguments having to do with the volume of the recent bottoms we've had, whale activity, on-chain metrics, outflows of cryptocurrency, and more to try and come to a conclusion on where the bottom is for Bitcoin, when it's going to hit, so that you guys know the best time to buy in. We're also going to be talking about a bunch of different altcoins. We're going to be looking at Solana, Elrond, AVAX, Ethereum, HBAR, KDA, and EOS. Drop a one in chat if you're invested in at least one of those. I'm invested in several of them. And also, make sure you hit this like button if you enjoy today's video because it helps to promote the video in the algorithm. We're very much looking forward to today's show. We're going to be going through all of our altcoins starting uh, here in about five minutes. We're going to look at Solana, Elrond, and AVAX first. Then after that, coming up close to the top of the hour, we're going to jump into Bitcoin. Following that, then we're going to look at some news. we got some interesting headlines here having to do with El Salvador having a Bitcoin city. That's going to be really interesting. We're also going to be looking at how one of the uh, financial service ministers in Australia said that Bitcoin is not a fad and how Kathy Wood said that Bitcoin will hit $500,000 within the next five years. If you don't know, Kathy Wood is the founder and CEO of ARK Invest. They've got almost $60 billion in assets under management. Then we're going to look at Ethereum. And following that, we're going to look at HBAR, KDA, and EOS. But I am joined, as always, by my co-host, TA Tim. How you doing, Tim? I'm doing good. It was a you know good weekend. You know, Virginia Tech lost, but uh, we always lose with style. And again, no Fuente, so looking forward to a bright future. Uh, I'm okay with it, you know. Poor Miami fans, they won the game, but they might have to stick with that coach for another year, so. Oof. Might suck to be them. That's pretty rough. Well, we're also joined, as always, by Smay. How you doing, Smay? Hello, everybody. I'm doing good. I had a good weekend. West Virginia won, so, you know. Yeah, beat and Texas. Who Cel loses Celtics now. Uh, beat the Lakers a little bit ago. That was pretty cool. Did they uh, beat them in the new Crypto.com arena? Uh, it's not crypto.com arena. No, yet. it's going to be, yeah. I but, it's gonna be, uh, it hasn't and, happened. No, yet, it was no. at TD Gardens. Thank you. Um, oh, okay. But I also would like to say, guys, I would like to shout out three people. I want to shout out Ricardo Vinegas. I don't know how Woo! to pronounce that name. I'm sorry. Uh, crypto Alchemist and Matthew Campbell. Thank Let's you guys go. so much for being members. We love you guys. Thank you guys so much for being members of the channel. We very much appreciate that. Guys, did you see the Kelly Kellen interview over the weekend? If you didn't, you need to go back on the channel and watch that like right as soon as you're done watching this stream because Kelly and I had a great conversation. If you guys don't know who Kelly is, he's in chat right now. He's one of the people on our research team and I had a phenomenal interview with him and if you're new to cryptocurrency, there are some very valuable lessons that you could learn from that interview. We had a whole lot of fun doing that. Tim, I just before we jump into it, I kind of want to just hear your opinion of what does the market look like right now? Kind of confusing. Uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of things going on in this market that are going to tempt people to think that, oh, we're ready. We're going you know bullish. But there's a lot of sentiment and a lot of things that, if you dig a little deeper and zoom out, aren't quite ready yet. But it, we'll dive into all of that. I know we you have lots of thoughts. I have lots of thoughts. Uh, but... If, I know a lot of people are asking what they do with their Bitcoin. Should they buy more? Should they sell? That's what we're talking, talking about, about today. You found the right place. Well, guys, before we jump into it, I do want to mention that today's show is brought to you by Lux Algo. And jump onto my screen real quick, Smay, because this is the first time that this has ever happened. Lux Algo is actually doing a lifetime sale right now. You can get it for life. And as you can see here on the page, save infinity because it is normally a monthly membership. You can get it for $9.97. It's worth every single penny, guys. We use Lux Algo every single day. We're very much a big fan of this product, whether or not we are sponsored by them we would be using it because it is a great way of doing technical analysis this is only going to happen for the next eight days through the 30th and you'll never get to buy it lifetime ever again so if you want to sign up for lux algo use the coupon use the link in the description box down below and get it for life use that link down below and you'll be getting access to a phenomenal phenomenal product and by the way guys also don't forget that we have the nft giveaway going on if you want you can click the link down below gleam.io get some entries by following my, uh, me over on twitter at crypto jeb but we are going to go ahead and jump straight in to the altcoin market rundown and we're going to start over here on solana you guys love solana solana has become very popular lately and as you can see it is currently sitting at rank number five on coin market cap with 67 billion dollars in market capitalization and there's about 300 million in circulating supply if you don't know solana is one of the big uh, i wouldn't call it competitors but one of the big peers of ethereum perhaps you could say it is attempting to build a decentralized application a platform that uh, runs smart contracts that can run DeFi, nft 
NFTs, things like that. It has a much lower level coding language than Ethereum does, which theoretically gives the developers on the Solana blockchain much more power than you might have on Ethereum. And it is much faster and much cheaper than the Ethereum blockchain. So a lot of people are talking about Solana being the next Ethereum killer. Two things on that I want to mention before we even jump into the technicals. Number one, I have heard about 50 different projects say that they are the Ethereum killer and none of them have managed to do it just yet. And number two, Solana's own creators said that they don't want to overtake Ethereum. They don't see it as a competition. They just want to provide value however they can. So I just kind of want to settle that argument because a lot of people seem to think that Solana is going to obliterate Ethereum or something. I don't think we need to be drawing those comparisons, at least in my opinion. But looking at the chart of Solana, let's try and figure out where it's going so we can see if there is opportunity here. One of the things that we talked about last week is that there is an uptrending level of support right here on Solana on its daily chart. And you can see that Solana has actually bounced off of that. This right here shows you the power of technical analysis because this told us, hey, this downtrend right here on Solana has a level of support. Let's see if it holds. And it did hold. Not only did we hold support from this uptrending level of support, we also had a flat level here at $180. And I believe last week, I don't remember, I could be, mis I could be misremembering, but I think last week I had the opinion that Solana was going to pull down to $180. We're looking at dozens of altcoins now. It's hard to remember. I believe I was talking about it going down to $180 to $200, and it has now bounced from there. We had this flat level of support at $180 based on this high over here on October the 3rd and this low here on October 28th, but then we also had this uptrending level of support right here. So far, it looks like Solana is respecting that. But let's take a look here at some different technicals. First and foremost, you can see that Lux Oscillator, which is part of the Lux Algo Premium Package, has started reversing and start moving to the upside. That's really important because for all of you guys who don't know, my strategy on Lux Algo is looking for a buy signal or a sell signal, trend catcher changing color, and then Lux Oscillator giving us a confirmation of that. Those are three different signals. The color of the trend catcher right here, the buy and the sell signal, and then Lux Oscillator. What I want to see happen on Solana here is I want to see this go from a sell signal to a buy signal, such as we saw over here. I want to see the trend catcher turn from red, which is this line right here, to green, as we saw earlier on in the month. And then I also want to see us continue moving to the upside on Lux Oscillator down here. If that occurs, then I will feel strongly that we are moving to the upside. However, the thing is, we did pull right back down and, and uh, test the, uh, the top of our EQ cloud here. So that does give us potentially some confidence that we have hit a local bottom because that is the level of support that we have hit in previous market cycles as well. But looking at some other parts of our TA, we can also see on MACD, for example, the MACD has been converging bullish for the last four days. And for all of you guys who are in the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy, if you switch over to Heiken Ashi charts, remember what we teach in CT2A. We look at Heiken Ashi changing color in corroboration, in uh, corroboration, uh, corroborating that uh, data with MACD moving in a certain direction. So MACD is moving bullish. And then we also see his, um, uh, Heiken Ashi candlesticks up here have turned green. That is kind of a short to medium term confirmation that we could be seeing some more bullish action moving into the next couple of days. Now, one of the things that doesn't give me a lot of confidence on Bit on uh, Solana right now is that the volume is very low. The volume has been low for quite some time, and that's kind of just uh, typical of the way the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency markets are right now, but I would like to see a little bit more volume come back in. All in all, I think Solana is doing pretty well, and I think it's going to follow the rest of the market. I don't think it's going to decouple very much from the rest of Bitcoin and the crypto markets. If Bitcoin and crypto continue moving up, then Solana probably is too. If Bitcoin and crypto start going down, then Solana probably is as well. However, we also do see that of the top 10, Solana right now is the only one that is green over the last 24 hours. So quite frankly, if it is going to de uh, decouple from the rest of the cryptocurrency markets, it's probably going to decouple in a bullish manner. I would say that Solana looks relatively bullish right now, but I don't personally see a trading opportunity here. If you had have asked me three days ago, I probably would have said, yeah, I think there's a decent long opportunity here. I think the best time to enter a trade has probably passed. That doesn't mean that it's not a good trade, but I'm just not as confident in a trade right now as I would have been three days ago. With that said, Tim, do you have any extra thoughts on uh, Solana? Yeah, I would say one bullish thought that I would leave the, uh, the consumer with is that it, it looks to me as though we are actually we have set up some bullish RSI divergence on the daily chart. Now, how far that's going to play out, we will see. Oh, yeah, we have. But the the bearish thing that I'm looking at, the, the and it's not bearish, it's it's concern. My screen. It looks as if this rally we just had over the last couple of days. So here you see we have three green days. Where does it top out at if you're looking at the Bollinger Bands? Right at that 20 daily SMA. Ooh, that's a good point. That is not a great sign. It doesn't mean it's over. It could just mean, hey, they, they hit their head, but they're going to go back up and hit it again. But that's something I'm keeping an eye on is, hey, did we just 
hit that and use it as resistance, and we're gonna come back down and test the bottom of the Bollinger Bands. Long story short, though, I do think that overwhelmingly Solana is moving bullish. Mm -hmm. It's just if people are thinking that today is the day it's going to explode again, I don't know if that's the case. That is a fair assessment, and that's a really good point out here on the Bollinger Bands. But with that said, guys, we're going to go ahead and move here on to eGold, otherwise known as Elrond. You guys are always asking about this project, and for good reason. We have been talking about this project for the last couple of weeks, and I've been showing you guys this long-term ascending wedge here. And I've talked about how Elrond is going to do one of two things. It might seem obvious that this is the case, but it really is important here. It's either going to break bullish out of this ascending wedge or bearish. Why do I say that? Well, the point I'm trying to make when I say that is not, oh, it's going to go up, it's going to go down. The point I'm trying to make is that it's probably going to have a large amount of volatility coming in the next couple of days. That's what we were talking about last week. Well, now it has broken to the upside. And if we look over on CoinMarketCap, we might be able to find out why. Let's type in eGold. Let's see if we can't get to the bottom of it. Take a look over here. We're sitting at no, uh, rank number 23. It is one of the biggest gainers right now in cryptocurrency, and it has pushed up to a new all-time high. I think a lot of what happened here is that we saw more volume come in as we broke this level of resistance, and quite frankly, a lot of the cryptocurrency market is pretty bored. I'd say the, the majority of the people in crypto right now are looking for some kind of opportunity, so when you finally do see something like eGold come in and break a resistance level that has been in place since all the way back at the beginning of February of this year, I think I think a lot of people jumped on this and a lot of people have bought this up. On top of that, there's also a very strong community around Elrond. Many of them are watching this stream right now. And I think a lot of people are extremely excited by this rally and the FOMO is kind of uh, allowing this rally to continue. Let's go ahead and take a look here at Lux Algo though, because Lux Algo has something to say about this rally. It says this, we are on the absolute outside of the reversal zones on Lux Algo. What does that mean? Well, one, it means the market is overwhelmingly bullish. Just to push that far into the reversal zones means that the market has a lot of bullish sentiment, obviously. But the other thing that you need to keep in mind here is it is it is remarkably rare for a cryptocurrency to get outside of the reversal zone. I'm talking stupidly rare. And it can happen during price discovery, but you got to realize Elrond has just rallied 55% in three days. The question on your mind as you're seeing this is, should I enter a trade? right? That's what you're probably thinking if you're looking at this market. And by the way, guys, we're going to jump into Bitcoin here in about 15 minutes, actually about 12 minutes. So make sure to stay tuned for that because we've got a lot to talk about over there. But as far as Elrond is right now a time to enter a trade. Well, how do we answer that question? The way that we answer that question is by asking another question. Am I getting a good deal? It's that simple. Am I getting a good deal if I buy this project? Am I getting a good deal? The way that we find out if we're getting a good deal is by looking at the RSI. The RSI is sitting at 84. That means you're not getting a good deal. Here's the thing. And a lot of people see this happen and it discourages them from technical analysis. Could you buy Elrond right now and make another 20 or 30%? Absolutely, you could. You definitely could do that. The problem is, that's a little bit like saying, I've played the lottery one time in my life and the one time I played it, I won $10,000. So therefore, because every time I've played the lottery, I've won $10,000, that it's going to happen every single time. So I'm going to go put my life savings on, in the Powerball. That's not smart. You need to have a strategy when you're trading. Could you make money in Elrond right now? Absolutely. You could. But if you make 100 trades like this, I can almost guarantee you, you are going to be down. What you want to do is you want to look for trades that you are getting a good deal on. If we were looking here at Elrond five days ago and we said, hey, look, RSI is sitting at 54 and we're strong uh, buy signal here on Lux Algo. And, you know, we're in the upper zone. Maybe there's something fundamental that happens on the project. Great. Enter a trade there with a tight stop loss. Say, OK, I think it's going to break bullish. But if it doesn't, I'll have a tight stop loss right here. That was the trade to make. A mistake that people make when they're trading all the time is they see, hey, a great trade just happened. So I'm just going to go ahead and make the trade. No, you missed the ch you missed your boat. It already happened. You know, you, it, it's too late. It's too late, in my opinion, to make. Well, it's not too. It's not my opinion. It's a fact. It's too late to make money on these on this last four day of rally. Could Elrond continue going up? Yes. Is right now. Is it a good statistically speaking? a good bet to bet on Elrond continuing to rally? Probably not. That being said, there might be something happening in the fundamentals that I don't know about. Maybe there's some massive amount of FOMO. Tim, do you have any information on yeah, that? Yeah, no, Kelly just texted us saying Eagle is pumping because they just released their decks. Uh, there you go. Mayor.exchange, I think is how it's pronounced. Oh, he said, yeah, pronounced Mayor. Uh, decks, liquidity pools, and yield farming. And that's what I'm talking yeah. about. That's why you guys want to make sure that you are looking at the fundamentals and at the technicals. And that just came across my desk, so I do apologize. That's kind of the point I'm making. If something fundamental is happening, then yes, absolutely go for it.
the, the only thing and I will is say is example. we discussed this this project, uh, I think, a, two weeks ago or so. Because when I pulled it up, I actually already had drawings. Zoom out. Zooming out on the weekly chart, we have been in an ascending wedge for a while now, and nothing has changed. Even this rally, it's pushing us closer towards that level of resistance. So I would love to see if this pump can get us above that level of resistance and will break the, the statistically improbable way and bullish out of an ascending wedge. But at this point, I'm actually looking at the T sequential on everything from like the 12 hourly chart down is you see a bunch of red nines. The color's green, but again, you'll see red nines, meaning it is getting close to where it needs to see a reversal. It's overextended yep. on the Bollinger Bands on almost every single chart. The fundamentals, these are great. This is making money, but at some point, the balloon loses its helium and it yep. starts to fall. Yep. And unfortunately, I, I think unless we can significantly break through that resistance, the other thing I'm looking at in the weekly chart is just look at the volume and how it's just on down. Despite the fact that the price keeps rising, Oof. the volume's just not there. Yeah, I think e-gold is, again, that, that that balloon, I think it, the helium's starting to, to lose. Yeah. doesn't mean it's bad project long term. It just means for right now it, it might come back you down. You probably missed the boat me. on that trade. Well, guys, we're going to go ahead and move on here to AVAX Avalanche because we got some really interesting news on Avalanche. It actually did the same thing that Eagle did over the weekend. It broke bullish out of this long-term ascending wedge. And this is one of the things we talked about. We talked about, hey, look, AVAX could pull to the downside. There's different support zones that we drew yes, uh, over the last week. But in this case, it actually broke bullish. And the reason that I think it did that is because it was starting to go parabolic here. AVAX has still not finished its price discovery era. Area, uh, era, And people need to realize that when a cryptocurrency is in that price discovery phase and is trying to figure out, hey, what are we actually worth? It is sometimes going to have these weird, statistically um, unlikely movements. You can see that in the top 10, uh, in the top 20 even, uh, Crypto uh, Avalanche and uh, Crypto.com are the only ones that are up in the last seven days. Avalanche is in price discovery right now, and Crypto.com obviously just had that big announcement of the Crypto.com arena being uh, the the uh, the Staples arena, uh, the Staples arena. What is it called? It, the the Staples Center. Staples Center. Staples Center. Thank you very much. The Staples Center being renamed to Crypto.com. So Crypto.com has a reason to be going up. Avalanche does also. One of the big things about Avalanche that has happened uh, over the weekend and actually just happened again in the last 20 minutes is it jumped into the top 10. First time in history Avalanche has been in the top 10. And quite frankly, guys, I think it has what it takes to be a top 10 player. I think that Avalanche is worth $133. But I would also caution you, as I said before, could it keep going up? Yes, there are a lot of great fundamentals on Avalanche in the same way there are a lot of great fundamentals on Elrond. The problem is, are you getting a good deal? It's always unpopular when I say this because people are like, am I getting a good deal? I just jumped in the top 10. It's going to keep going. Yes, I know, but hang on. Take a look at the technicals. Are you getting a good deal? You were getting a good deal back here when it was at 54, and by now you would have already made 154%. Right now, you're not getting a good deal. So here's what I would say on Elrond and on AVAX. If you believe in the projects long term, which, by the way, I believe in both of those projects long term, it's never a bad time to buy them. Maybe sometimes it's a bad time to buy them. But if you're going to hold these projects for multiple years, they're probably going to go up in the next couple of years. I'm specifically speaking right now to the guy who is looking at buying this project, holding it for two days, and swing trading it and flipping it. If that's what you're trying to do, you're taking a lot of risk that I think is unnecessary. There's other areas in the cryptocurrency market that have lower risk, higher reward ratios that I think you're going to get a better opportunity in. But as I said, if you want to invest in AVAX or Elron, that's completely your decision. I think it's a good idea personally, but that is something that you'll have to come to a conclusion on yourself guys let's go ahead and take a look at chat let's see what chat is doing and after that we're going to come back and talk about bitcoin we got a bunch of ta to dive into over there really excited to be looking at some btc so drop a one in chat if you are too and make sure to hit that like button let's see if we can't get to a thousand likes here in just the next couple of minutes thank you guys for tuning in all right from what i'm seeing i think we only have two so we might even be able to go and look at some questions in cool. chat but one is from albert sanchez alvarez he starts by saying, don't laugh. Uh, so, you know, that's a good start. Don't laugh. Dent Dentacoin. <laughs> okay. There we go, Smay. Sorry, sorry I had to. I had to. Keep going. Keep going. Dentacoin, actual project being used every week more than more densest join network. Why can't it gain traction? Malign for years. I don't know. Um, Do you have any comment on that whatsoever? I have no comment. I don't. It's it's a, it's a rank 1,000, so. Yeah. Uh. I don't know. I don't know. Here's the thing, guys. Have you ever remember back to the first time you were in a relationship? First time that you had a boyfriend or a girlfriend. For most of you guys, it's girlfriends because our audience is 92% male. Remember back to the first the puppy love that you had? 
that person may have been crazy. That person may have been not even close to the person that was for you, but you were still madly in love, right? Because it was the first time that you felt that. A lot of people have that puppy love around the first altcoin that they realize, hey, this thing's really cool. I like this project. I'm not saying that's you, my friend, but a lot of people struggle with this. I struggle with this. I struggle with this with a cryptocurrency called Bitcoin Diamond back in the day. I looked at this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's only got like 500,000 cryptocurrency. It's got Bitcoin in the name. It's going to moonshot. If it goes to $100, it's at $10 right now. I can make a thousand X my money. Here's the thing. There are so many fish in the sea out there. Don't fall for the first cryptocurrency that you fall in love with because it probably isn't the one for you. Yeah. You know, experiment a little bit. You never know what's out there. We have another donation from the same guy, Albert Sanchez Alvarez, saying, love the show. TMI and you start my day off Ubering. Hey, uh, let's go. Another SDSU Aztec. So uh, I think that's uh, South Dakota State University. South Dakota State that University. San probably. Diego State? San Diego State, I think. San Diego State. Aztec win. Uh, need crypto to do the same. I, I didn't pay attention to San Diego State this week. Uh, I have sorry, not Albert. watched that. Uh, there, you know, in chat, I'm going through chat and something real quick. How much time do we have? We have, like, what, two minutes? Yeah. Someone was asking your opinion about Crow. I've actually seen a couple people talking about uh, Crow. We're talking about so. Crypto.com. I think it's a – so I ha I, I'm very familiar with Crypto.com, the website and the company. I'm not as familiar with the cryptocurrency and what they're trying to do with the cryptocurrency. The fact that it's attached to the name Crypto.com alone is probably going to end up allowing it to get into the top 10. Just yeah. being honest with you, I think uh, CRO, Crow, is a... Having that name alone is probably going to allow it to double or triple from here. I don't know. Like I said, I want to do more research on the crypto itself, the coin itself. But Crypto.com, the company, I think is going to be very successful. We could be looking at another Binance coin. Binance coin sitting at number three. Why? Yeah, it has a lot of functionality. But really, the reason Binance Coin is up there is because it has the word Binance in it. It's got brand awareness. I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's ranked 13th on the week. I mean, if you scroll, Av AVAX, we just talked about it, has been up 37% this week. Mm -hmm. uh, but Crypto.com or Crow has been up 64 So amongst the top, let me see here, uh, definitely at least 30, 40, 50 coins, it is the fastest, is the, the highest grossing this week. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, as far as the f actual fundamentals of it, don't know. Yep. We got time for maybe one more question from chat. I don't know. I think we got through all the super chats. Guys, thank you very much for those super chats. We really appreciate that. Oh, hey, another yep. one just came just in. Just one from, from Chris O'Rourke. Hey, Jeb, God bless you. Could you please review Adam as I'm looking to make a big play on this coin moving Crow into this? Thanks. We can look at Cosmos at some point in the future. Adam is one that you guys are always asking about. Uh, we don't, I don't think we'll have time to look at it this stream, but we can in the future. It is just for a little snapshot up. You probably already know this if you're looking at getting in. To it it's up about 10 percent 14 percent in the last 15 days i think cosmos is a decent project but like i said we're not going to have too much time to jump into that today unfortunately but what we are going to have time to do is to jump straight in to bitcoin but before we do that i do want to remind you there is a lifetime sale going on on Lux Algo. You don't want to miss that. Link's in the description. Let's go ahead and take a look at Bitcoin. We're going to be looking at Lux Algo on Bitcoin as well. Let's not look at my spaghetti chart where I have all of my technicals. Uh, let's go ahead and find a clean chart. Here we go. That's perfect right there. Uh, Bitcoin over the last couple of weeks. Let's take a quick look at this, and then we're going to dive straight into the technicals. We have so many technicals to bring you on Bitcoin, guys. Drop a one in chat if you're excited for Bitcoin. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Bitcoin is down 20% over the last nine days. First thing I want to say, a lot of people in the stock market have the opinion that when the stock market, go, and you'll see where I'm going with this, in the stock market, they have an opinion that if the market goes down 20%, then you enter what's known as a recession. You've probably heard of them before. There was one in 2008, which really sucked. Uh, that is a stock market idea. And some traditional media tries to bring that over to Bitcoin every time Bitcoin goes down 20%. And they think, oh, Bitcoin must be going into a bear market because in the stock market, if you go down 20%, you go into a recession. That is flat out, hands down, categorically false. That's not the way it works in crypto. You got to go down a lot more than 20% to enter into a bear market. So if you are following that narrative that Bitcoin's down 20%, therefore it's entering a bear market, I encourage you to know that they're trying to get you to FUD out of your Bitcoin, largely because they want to buy it from you. I'm just letting you know, Bitcoin is not in a bear market right now. In fact, it's in one of the strongest bull markets that it has ever been in. So right now is one of the worst times to be getting fearful about your holdings in BTC. It is a good time to be looking to add more, at least in my opinion. But let's take a look at some of the technicals here on the daily chart. 
One of the things that you are going to see on the daily chart with its oscillators is that the MACD is converging bullish and has been for the last three days. This is pretty important because MACD has managed to push all the way down to the zero level. What does that mean? Well, that generally speaking is where the market will pull back to when it is in a correction. Taking a look here on uh, the September correction in Bitcoin, where we pulled back from 53 all the way down to 42, where did MACD go? It went from up here around 3,000 points all the way down here to about negative 1,000. We're seeing a similar thing happen on MACD right now. In fact, this entire correction is looking strikingly similar to the correction that we saw in September. What happened after the correction happened in September? We rallied 63% in 22 days. Just got to keep our perspective there. We are now getting down to the zero level on the MACD, and that tells us, hey, look, guys, Bitcoin is probably getting close to its bottom. It doesn't mean the bottom's in yet. To clarify, we're going to talk about that in a second, but it does mean that likely the bottom is getting close. Those are two different things. Just want to make sure you know that. Let's go ahead and take a look here at the RSI as well. You can see RSI has pulled all the way down to 43. It has not made it back up to 50. As you guys know, 50 is the uh, midpoint of the RSI because the RSI is an oscillator. RSI will oscillate as you would expect by the name, around that 50 level. And then if it gets above 50, up here between 50 and about 75, 80, this is what's known as the bullish control zone. Where we are right now is called the bearish control zone. Basically what RSI is telling us right now is that the bears are still the ones in charge. And until we get back up above that 50, we probably shouldn't be too confident in any uptrends. In short, we need to see it prove it. That's basically what we're saying here. Another thing I want to mention to you here on the RSI, is that we've seen the RSI pull all the way back down to 34 in the last couple of bottoms. Take a look at this. We thought we saw 34 get touched here on the 20th of July, and then we also saw it get touched here on the 20th of September. Right now, the bottom on Bitcoin is at 38. Why is that significant? Well, in theory, if we're having a similar correction to what we saw happen uh, in September and also in a different way to what we saw in June and July, then we should probably see the RSI go back to the same level. That would indicate that the bottom is not actually in on Bitcoin. And that's the question we're asking today. Did Bitcoin bottom? That's the question on everybody's mind. Is the bottom in for Bitcoin? I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not confident that it is. And we're going to explain why today, but this RSI is a good reason to believe that it might just not be. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at something else called the Bollinger Bands. You can see we are currently riding the, the bottom of the Bollinger Bands. And one of the concerning things about Bitcoin right now is that we did not manage to get up and test the mid-level of the Bollinger Bands. What does that tell us? It tells us that Bitcoin bounced, but it didn't bounce with a lot of strength. For example, on the inverse, when we hit these resistance levels up here around sixty-seven and $69,000, we ended up pulling back down to the center line on the Bollinger Bands, just right here. We did not do that this time. That means the strength of the bears over here was actually stronger than the strength of the bulls right now. What does that tell us? Well, that tells us that the bulls tried to rally us after we hit 55, but it seems like we may not have actually put a bottom in just just yet. That being said, we are riding the bottom of the Bollinger Bands, and that indicates we're probably getting close to a bottom, which is what RSI is telling us, but it is also telling us that we're probably not quite there just yet. Now, let's go ahead and look down to the four hourly chart because there are some other things we want to mention down there. First and foremost, there is some massive bearish RSI divergence showing up here. You can see there is a downtrending level of resistance on Bitcoin, uptrending level of resistance on the RSI. What does that mean? That means that the market has bearish RSI divergence. RSI divergence just means that the highs uh, or the lows on the price action is moving in a different direction than what we're seeing on the RSI. So you can see the highs here on RSI are moving up. Highs here on the price action are moving down. Divergence means diverging. It means moving in opposite directions. They are moving in opposite directions. RSI divergence can be thought of like this. If the RSI divergence is on top, it's pressure that's pushing you down. If the RSI divergence is on bottom, it's pressure that's pushing you up. So we're looking at bearish RSI divergence. That is pushing us to the downside because we are having the RSI divergence on the tops. That tells us, again, that the bottom is probably not in. But another thing that we're seeing here on the four-hourly chart that contradicts that is I would, I, I would argue that this isn't a very... This is not a very good looking pattern, but I know some of you guys are going to ask. There is, theoretically speaking, an inverse head and shoulders pattern happening here on the four hourly chart with a neckline right there, that same level. If that were to play out, then we would be looking for a price target of about 65000 I personally am not convinced that that's going to play out. I personally think 
that Bitcoin is probably going to have a hard time getting above this downtrend. And we're probably going to, instead of forming an inverse head and shoulders pattern, form a uh, fall, a uh, uh, pennant, a symmetrical triangle pattern that Bitcoin's going to break bearish out of, and it's going to come down here and test this uptrend. I'm just kind of putting my cards on the table. That's why I think it's going to happen. I think Bitcoin is going to continue through this pennant. It's going to break to the downside. This is why it's really, really important to look at everything two or three times, look at it through multiple lenses, and look at it through the lenses of other analysts. Because when you see an inverse head and shoulders pattern, I see that. But I also see a pennant. So there's two different patterns here on top of each other. Which one are we going to listen to? Well, based on everything that I'm seeing in the market, I'm going to listen to the bear pennant right here rather than the inverse head and shoulders pattern narrative because that fits with the rest of the analysis that I'm doing and the market sentiment that I'm seeing. With that said, taking a look down here at MACD, you can also see that MACD was bullish, but just recently, in fact, just in the last couple of hours, we had a bearish MACD cross. Now, over the last four hours, Bitcoin has had a rally, but that rally is getting rejected. There's a lot to this, guys. Bitcoin tried to rally here over the last four hours up to 59,000, and we've largely gotten rejected. You can see that down on the hourly chart, which we'll talk about here in a second. But basically what we saw is that Bitcoin is trying to put a bearish cross in here on the four hourly chart, and if that's confirmed, then that is probably going to be, uh, not probably, that's definitely going to be another argument that we are continuing to the downside. Now, uh, let's go ahead and look down here to the hourly chart as well on Bitcoin, and then we'll jump into Market Cipher and Lux Algo. Down here on the hourly chart, one of the first things you're going to see is that there is a bullish cross on MACD right now. That's a good thing. But at the same time, if we do start having a small correction here because we can't get above this downtrending level of resistance, then we're almost going to we're almost certainly going to see that reverse into a bearish MACD cross rather than a bullish one. And I'll also point out here, there is some bearish RSI divergence on Bitcoin here on the four, on the hourly chart. I'd say this already played out, but just in case you see that, uh, I do recognize that. I don't think that is uh, relevant anymore. Now, the other thing to keep in mind here on RSI, guys, is that RSI did push all the way down to 27, and it bounced all the way back up here above 50. But the thing is, as soon as it got above 50, what did it do? It started correcting. We're making lower highs on RSI, and that tells me that the bulls are losing their confidence. It means that the bulls are losing their strength. You can see we're also seeing lower highs here on the RSI on its bottom. Uh, not lower highs, sorry, lower bottoms, lower lows. It's telling me that the bulls are trying to rally, but they're having a bit of a hard time. Now, we're going to look at some more technical analysis, but before we do, I want to hand it over to Tim because, Tim, I know you have a lot of thoughts on these bottoms right now, especially having to do with volume. Well, you know, as a whole, when you look at this chart, this is a really boring looking chart. There's really nothing overwhelmingly strong for the bulls, and there's really nothing overwhelmingly strong for the bears. I have not talked about manipulation and composite man now for like a week, I think. So That's it a is time to bring it back The up. composite man. I want you guys to look using one indicator. I want you guys to look back over the last couple of months. I will follow. Using volume volume That's all we're going to use jeb i want us to go back every single time we see a dip so let's go back as you know, far hourly? as yeah four hourly chart let's use the four hourly chart cool i like the four hourly chart let's go back to obviously the big 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 bottom we had back in you know june you know starting may but going through june look at how the volume at the beginning of that fall is very very high a lot of volume happening that is telling the composite man, the institutions, the whales, hey, guys, this is the bottom. This is where we're going to see a lot of fight. But there's a lot of stuff happening here. Let's continue to shake them out until they get tired, and then we'll rally the price. So notice over the next two months that the volume just gets low, 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 low. And finally, when we come back down here to that 29, you know, 500, there's almost no volume whatsoever. That, in, that tells composite man – Hey, they've been shook out. Let's go ahead and do it. It's time to rally. Boom, we had a rally. Let's fast forward to when we kind of started, you know, crashing here around. Uh, we had, you know, we had some ha something happening right here in the 5th of September, but let's go over to the 18th of September. Big fall. Look at the volume. Lots of volume. We move sideways, sideways, sideways. But over here around the 29th of September, volume super low. Not a lot of stuff happening. What does a composite man do? Boom. Let's rally. Let's go up. We come back over here. We had a little bit of a fall here at your early, uh, late October, around the 23rd. High volume, high volume, high volume. Move sideways. Hey, look, the volume's low. Time to rally. Let's go hit a new all-time high. Same thing. We have just come down. We touch. We have a wick touching 55,200, something like that, with a lot of volume. What I am looking for, I actually think the price is going to be moving in a, in a channel here for a little bit. What I'm looking for is us to be continue to come down 
somewhat close to that 55,000, maybe 56, but it, the bottom is not necessarily in. The yeah. bottom is probably going to hang here until we see that volume diminish and that communicates to the composite man and the whales and the institutions hey we shook out all the weak hands it's time to rally so still bullish but if you're not ready to take a ride uh then you might get pretty scared here for the next couple of days if not weeks yeah and that's kind of the point i'm making too with the analysis that i'm looking at and this is just so you guys know the opinion of as far as i'm aware our entire research team bitcoin looks like it's getting close to a bottom but it looks like the bottom might not be in just yet. The price that is the bottom might be 55,700, which is the which is the bottom that we set on the 18th of November 4 days ago, but we don't believe personally that the bottom is here yet. And it actually makes a lot of sense because if you'll remember uh, two weeks ago, I said that the bottom that I expected Bitcoin would go to would be 53 to 54,000. And I actually came back the next day and said, you know what? I'm not as confident on that anymore. Well, now it looks like I maybe shouldn't have reneged on that because to be honest with you guys, based on what Tim just said about the volume and shaking out the weak hands, based on what we just looked at with the MACD, based on what we just looked at with this bear pennant. It in indicates to us that we're probably not out of the woods just yet, and we could go down and test this long-term uptrending level of support, which, by the way, would be the healthiest thing that Bitcoin could do. If we start mm -hmm. breaking below that, then we need to start talking about some things. But if we go down and test that and bounce, that's going to line up with what Tim's talking about, about the volume going down. And by the yeah. way, when I say markets are cyclical, take a look here at the four-hourly chart and look at what the volume does. It goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. It looks like a wave. This is what we're in right now. We are in a wave. We are in a wave down. Down. When is the wave up going to start? I personally think it's going to start in the next week or so, mm -hmm. probably towards the latter part of this week, maybe even into net into this coming weekend. But I do think it's coming. With that said, let's go ahead and take a brief look at Market Cipher, and then we're going to look at Lux Algo because there's a lot of interesting things to show you on Lux Algo. Down here on Market Cipher, I want to show you several things. I'm going to go ahead and bring it up here on the daily chart. The first thing I want to show you has to do with the money flow. Now, the money flow is this line right here. I know this can be kind of hard to read to the uninitiated, but this line right here, the green and red, which has been green for a long time, is the money flow. What I want to show you here is this. Money flow, whenever Bitcoin goes into a big correction, especially what we saw here in September, it does have a drop, and it does drop pretty far, but it generally doesn't go negative. We've seen something similar happen here in the last couple of days. We saw a pretty big drop on money flow down to about 12, but it's bounced and it's rallied, and that indicates to us, hey, we might be getting close to a bottom. doesn't necessarily mean we're at the bottom. But it does mean we might be getting close because in a massive bull market uptrend, a lot of times market ciphers money flow will drop down close to that zero level but won't quite hit it. There is an argument to be made that the money flow needs to drop even more as we saw happen back here in September than it did here because in September when we bottomed out, it hit four. Here uh, just a couple days ago, it hit 12. So you could say that we need another bottom down, but I think you're stretching just a little bit there. Uh, I think the point here is that the, mar that the money flow is bullish, and it does tell us we're probably getting pretty close to a bottom. Now, on the other hand, the RSIs here on the daily chart are telling us that the bears are very much in charge, and we have not seen a big uptick in the RSIs to tell us otherwise. In fact, in the last 24 hours, we've seen another tick down on the RSIs. That tells us the bears are still in charge, and that's kind of the point we're making here. We want to see Bitcoin's bottom. But I'm not convinced it's in just yet. I have not seen a buy signal or anything like that. I have not seen a good reason to believe that the bottom is here. I think it's close, but I don't think it's here just yet. Now, on top of that, if we look at the VWAP, this is actually relatively discouraging for any of the bulls out there. Maybe not discouraging. That's probably the wrong word. Pro uh, if you're confident that the bottom's in, this is probably something that you're not going to want to see. Put it that way. VWAP, which is this line right here, just tried to touch zero, and it rejected off of it. It has failed to get through the zero level, and that is not a good sign. That means that the bears, again, are still in charge. So money flow, uh, RSIs, and the, uh, VWAP are telling us the same thing. However, if we look at the momentum down here, you can see the momentum looks like it's getting close to a bottom. Might have a little bit further to go. It started diverging again. Just take a look here at the blue, the light blue. It started getting really small. Now it's starting to get wide again. That basically tells us, similarly to MACD, it looks like it was going to cross bullish, but then it actually didn't, and there's a little bit more to go. Now, taking a look at Market Cipher DBSI, uh, we can see that there is still a bunch of sell pressure going on on Bitcoin, especially just today. You can see that there's a 10 on top of markets on top of today's candlestick and a negative three. Remember, big numbers on DBSI are pushing the market away from the number. So if there's a 10 on top, it's pushing the market down. Small numbers are like gravity; they're pulling you towards it. So if there's a negative three, mm, excuse me, if there's a negative three down here, that means it's pulling the market towards that negative three. So it's bearish pressure coming from Market Cipher DBSI. Now, with all that said. 
I actually want to look at Kelly's Twitter because he's got some really awesome on-chain metrics over here that we want to check out. By the way, if you guys haven't followed Kelly on Twitter, make sure to do so. The link to his Twitter. Um, actually, I don't know if we have the link to his Twitter in our description, but you can see it right here. He's at we Kelly Kellum. We, we do. do. We have Kelly. Yes. In, good. Go follow Kelly on Twitter. He's got three and a half thousand followers now. I'd love to see get. I'd love to see him get to uh, five thousand followers relatively soon. I've said this before, price equals last thing big slash smart money looks at on-chain data shows the exchange outflows and uh, uh, active addresses and coins moving to exchange both indicate restlessness metrics show prep to hodl not to sell. So let's take a look here at some of these different alerts that he has pictures of. Glassnode alerts shows this. The amount of Bitcoin active, uh, the Bitcoin amount of supply last active over the last three to six months. This is a chart from Glassnode. What does this chart show? It shows that the amount of Bitcoin that has been active in the last three to six months has gone down. That's what it shows. It shows that people are hodling Bitcoin. That's essentially what we're getting at here. A lot of people are hodling Bitcoin. When you hodl Bitcoin, what does that mean? It means that you expect the market is going to increase in price action over the next little while. And we're not talking about a lot of Bitcoin. We're, talking, we're not talking about a little amount of Bitcoin. We're talking about couple dozen percentage points of the Bitcoin market that like there's been a huge drop. I mean, if you just look in the market here, uh, this chart here, you can see the um, this number went from 2.75 million Bitcoin down to under 1.5 million Bitcoin. So that's a drop of over a million Bitcoin. So we're talking six, seven, eight, nine, ten percent of Bitcoin's market capitalization has moved into people that are hodling. That means a massive amount of people are expecting the market is going to increase in value. Now also take a look at this. Bitcoin exchange outflows have absolutely skyrocketed. And all of the on-chain metrics that we're looking at here, this is absolutely categorically hands down the one that I am most excited about. The exchange outflows on Bitcoin is absolutely ridiculous right now. Take a look at this exchange outflows. Jumped from just under 1,000 Bitcoin all the way up to 1,500 Bitcoin. Massive change. Massive change in Bitcoin outflows. Huge amount of money is leaving the market, uh, leaving um, um, exchanges right now, indicating that people are very excited about what Bitcoin is going to do next. Taking a look at this chart, you can see a, a similar chart for Ethereum that we just looked at on Bitcoin. The amount of Ethereum that's active on the market has gone down. This chart doesn't have as much of a hump, and the reason I would say that's happening is because uh, people are actively using Ethereum for things. Bitcoin, typically you throw it in a wallet and forget about it. Hopefully you don't forget the password, but you'll just leave it there and hodl it. A lot of times Ethereum, people are using it to do things like minting NFTs and working on decentralized applications and DeFi. Uh, but the fact that it's gone down this much indicates that the people that are using Ethereum to hodl and everything are hodling it even more than they already had been. So that's a big deal. This is one of the final ones we'll show you. Glassnode Alerts is also telling us that in the last, I believe this is the last week, uh, we have seen Bitcoin, yeah, weekly on-chain exchange outflows. We've seen $1.6 billion in Bitcoin outflows. We've seen uh, $2.2 billion in Ethereum inflows. Not really sure why we're seeing so much Ethereum inflows. I think the reason for that might have something to do with the fact that Ethereum more recently hit a local all-time, uh, hit an all-time high than Bitcoin. Bitcoin did, you know, about a, a nine, 10 days ago. It's kind of been trading sideways for a little while. Ethereum just hit all-time high, so I think more people are trying to sell Ethereum. Uh, and then Tether has also seen $768 million in net outflows. The point here is massive net outflows coming in on Bitcoin. Ethereum is a different market, of course. I think Ethereum, which we're going to talk about here in a second, might have a little bit more um, of a drop to come than Bitcoin. But all of those on-chain metrics tell us that people are confident that the bottom is close. Not necessarily that it's in, but that the bottom is close on Bitcoin. Now, with that said, we're going to jump into our Lux Algo TA because there is a lot to cover here, guys. Lux Algo, as you know, is my favorite technical indicator package in the cryptocurrency markets. Very excited to be partnered with them. And like I said, guys, they do have a lifetime sale going on right now. It's only going to be active for another eight days, and you will never get this again. This is a big deal because, as you guys know, Lux Algo is normally $67 a month, and it is worth all of those pennies because it helps you to understand what the market is going to do. Let's go ahead and take a look at what Lux Algo is saying on the daily chart for Bitcoin. There is a lot to unpack here, so we're going to try and run through this in a timely manner, but there is a lot to get to. First thing I want to show you is that Bitcoin did enter a confirmed downtrend as a result of Lux Algo having a sell signal right here. We saw Trend Catcher turn red, and we saw Lux Oscillator move to the downside. Remember, we talked about that last week. Confirmed downtrend means that it could be in a downtrend for three days or three months. The point is, we confirmed we're in a downtrend. 
basically what we need to see now that we've confirmed a downtrend is we need to see a confirmed uptrend before we get super confident in this market. What does that entail? Well, it means that we need to see the trend catcher right here, which is one of the things that we can use to weed out false signals on Bitcoin. We need to see this trend catcher turn green. It was green for a long time here, and we had a confirmed uptrend because the uh, Lux, Alga, Lux Oscillator was bullish. We saw a strong buy signal, and we saw trend catcher turn green. You guys know my strategy on that. I look at all three of those because if you get only two of them or only one of them, that might be a false signal, but you get all three of those. It's very commonly going to be a good signal. Uh, we saw a sell signal, trend catcher turn red, and Lux Oscillator move to the downside. That indicates we're in a confirmed downtrend. The problem is now we got to figure out where the bottom is. Well, if we look at what happened in September, because as I said earlier, I think we're in a similar movement to what we saw last September. We saw Bitcoin pushed pretty far into what's known as the EQ cloud. The EQ cloud is this zone right here, and Bitcoin pushed all the way to the very bottom of the EQ cloud. In the current market, we've only gotten to the middle part of the EQ cloud. This cloud and its bottom is sitting down here around 53 to 54 4K, which again backs up this narrative that we have that we think Bitcoin is close to its bottom, but it's not there yet. If Bitcoin does break bearish out of the symmetrical triangle pattern, as I said earlier, it would probably move to our long-term uptrending level of support and to the bottom of the EQ cloud, which is the thing we've been saying for the last week. If it does that, I think it'll bounce, I think it'll rally, and I think it'll start to push back to the upside around 60K. And if that happens, then we might see a confirmed buy signal coming in uh, from Lux Algo. But right now, uh, it is still bearish. The Lux Oscillator is still bearish. We're still seeing red on Trend Catcher, and we're still under a sell signal. We are in a confirmed downtrend on Lux Oscillator. That being said, I do think that the bottom is close. Looking down to the four-hourly chart, let's take a look at what it's saying down here. Funnily enough, we do actually have a confirmed buy signal coming in on Lux Oscillator down here, and that actually kind of makes sense. And the reason is there is a principle in all indicators, not just Lux Algo, but in uh, 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 in uh, RSI, in MACD, in Bollinger Bands, in all of these, that they tend to be either a trending or a ranging indicator. What does that mean? When the market is in a strong uptrend or a strong downtrend, certain indicators are going to perform very well there. Sometimes when the market's trading sideways, certain indicators are going to perform very well there. It's rare that an indicator is built for both. It's normally built for one or the other. Lux Algo, at least the buy signals, uh, the trend catcher, and the oscillator, is typically built for a trending market, not a ranging market. Bitcoin is in a range right now. What does that mean? A range is just a fancy term to say it's moving sideways. So yes, we did have a confirmed buy signal here, but we also need to keep in mind the rest of our technical analysis analysis knowledge. This indicator is built for a trending market. We're not in a trending market. We're in a ranging market. So even though we had a confirmed buy signal, I'm not going to put a lot of stock in it because we are in that confirmed. Uh, we are in a, a, a range. And that's what we say when we talk about don't blindly follow technical in indicators. The CEO of Lux Algo, who we've talked to, even told us this. People blindly follow the buy and the sell signals. That's not what Lux Algo is designed to do. It's designed to supplement your analysis. It doesn't replace your analysis. This is a tool built for a technical analyst, which you all are. But just remember, you don't want to blindly follow it. Nevertheless, what is it telling us on the hourly, on the four hourly chart? It's telling us on the four hourly chart a few things. The buy and the sell signals are typically trending indicators. So I'm not actually going to look at trend catcher here. I'm not going to look at the buy and sell signals. I'm not going to look at Lux Oscillator because we're moving sideways. What I am going to look at is I'm going to look at the EQ cloud and I'm going to look at the uh, reversal zones because those tend to be relatively useful even in sideways move, uh, sideways markets. We saw we pushed into the bottom um, reversal zone down here and bounced. That's great, but the reversal zone also dropped like a rock. If Bitcoin does break to the downside and we see the reversal zone start picking up like it says that it might, then that reversal zone will probably give us support down here. On top of that, notice how we re how we rejected off of the bottom of the EQ cloud. That tells us that this market is uh, maybe has some buy pressure here, but the longer term trend that shows up primarily on the daily chart has not yet uh, really allowed for a reversal. So EQ cloud trend catcher is telling us there's probably more to go to the downside. Now on the hourly chart, I am going to show I am going to show you. Um, Lux Algo down here, but again, we're basically looking at the same thing down here. We're in a trending, we're in a ranging market. Just want to be kind of careful looking at the buy and the sell signals. There is relevant data here. I'm not going to jump too much into it. The main thing I'm interested in here is that the reversal zone down here is uh, giving us support and the EQ cloud right now. We tried to break above it, but we didn't manage to. The main place that I'm going to be looking at Lux Algo right now, just because that's where the actual trend shows up, is on the daily chart. And I already told you my opinion on that. Remember, guys, there is a lifetime access sale going on right now. Check the link down below. But what we're going to do now is we're going to move into some news and from there we are going to jump into our next intermission. 
first thing I want to mention to you guys has to do with El Salvador. This is pretty interesting. Bitcoin City. El Salvador plans first Bitcoin City backed by Bitcoin bonds. Now, I'm not going to go into a bunch of detail on this. You guys know I like to move through this news kind of quickly. Just kind of want to give you the headline here. Uh, El Salvador aims to establish the world's first Bitcoin City funded by Bitcoin backed bonds. President Nayib Bukele announced on Saturday, doubling down on his bet that the cryptocurrency will help Central America's uh, the Central American country attract crypto investment. Bukele also claimed the Bitcoin city planned in uh, planned in the eastern district district of La Union would get geothermal power from a volcano. It would likewise not impose any taxes except on value added taxes. And he also says this: uh, Bukele estimated that public infrastructure would cost roughly. 300,000 Bitcoins. Half of the VAT levied would be used to fund the bonds issued to develop the city. The other half would be beneficial for services such as garbage, garbage collection. So this would be a really big deal, trying to build a city around Bitcoin. This guy is just taking El Salvador and saying, I'm going to turn this country into a giant Bitcoin experiment and see what happens. There is so much interesting coming out of El Salvador. And frankly, it's probably very good for the El Salvadoran economy that their name is constantly in the news because it is going to probably lead to more tourism, especially people that love Bitcoin. So props to El Salvador. Hopefully this goes well. Um, the, the, the world is watching you, El Salvador, to see how Nayib Bukele's experiment and how the El Salvadoran experiment goes. But one of the things I also want to talk about here, this is a really brief one. This is just kind of a quote. The Australian Finance Services Minister, Jane Humi, uh, publicly backed up digital assets by saying that they are not a temporary trend. Additionally, she opined that De uh, DeFi presents incredible opportunities for Australia. We need to acknowledge that this is not a fad. This is just another one of those quotes that I think is pretty interesting. As an industry and as a government, we need to acknowledge that this is not a fad. This is just more. Um, uh, she also says the uh, cryptocurrency is like the Internet in 1995, which I've been saying that for years. Just kind of something that you might be interested in uh, using in uh, a Thanksgiving conversation about Bitcoin and crypto. Now, final thing I'll mention here, Kathy Wood, CEO of ARK Invest. If you don't know what ARK Invest is, it is a uh, it is a a company that invests in different um, in, invests in other companies. It's a VC firm. It's kind of a, a VC firm. They have a lot of assets under management. They invest in different disruptive uh, tech companies is what they primarily uh, focus on. And they are big proponents of Bitcoin. CEO. Kathy Wood, who I'd love to meet Kathy Wood at some point. I know that she's a strong Christian. She named ARK Invest, uh, ARK Invest after reading about the Ark of the Covenant, by the way. If any of you guys are interested in that, look that up. It's a really cool story uh, why she came to name uh, ARK Invest that. But she believes that Bitcoin is going to drive to over $500,000 in the next five years. Tim, riddle me this, and then we're going to jump into our, our next intermission. Do you think Kathy Wood is right that we're going to 500 k in the next five years? And should people listen to Kathy Wood? Do you know anything about her? I, I, first of all, is she right? Yes, she definitely is. I actually think she might be lowballing it because I think in the next five years, we might have two, if not three more bull runs. And I, I, I think, you know, there's a lot of people who think that we're currently already done with our current bull run. That's not true in my opinion. I think the majority of most holders' opinions, I think we're going to be topping out closer to 150, if not 200. This one, I think the next one, the next bull run is when we top out 500, maybe even higher than that. And then again, I think we might even get three bull runs before five years. And it could be Maybe. well, well, well higher. But what was the second half of that question? Uh, do, what, should, do you know anything about Kathy Wood and should people listen to her? No, I, I do know that. So <laughs> the truth is I, I know probably about as much as it is most people who have just heard her name in, in passing on news. I do remember when I first heard her name and it came out, I remember thinking this is somebody that we need to pay attention to. Yep. She's not going to go away. She's going to oh, be no. a, a, pl a big player in the Bitcoin world. Uh, I know she was really, really big in helping deal with some of the, the FUD uh, about the environmental impacts of Bitcoin. Yeah. But as far as all of her personal things, you know, it's, it's really great to read about her. I think on paper, she looks like a great person. But again, I would love to meet her and find that out for myself. For if She it's true. is. Uh, just jump to my screen real quick here and then we'll jump into Super Chats. ARK Invest, we invest solely in disruptive innovation. This is a company, a company, a company that invests a lot in, you know, uh, genomic revolution, or, uh, uh, autonomous tech and robotics, next generation internet, fintech innovation. This is where they're talking about altcoins and everything. Kathy Wood is the CEO and CIO. Uh, ARK Invest, the last I checked had $53 billion in assets under management, but they're growing quickly, so that's probably over $60 billion at this point. Definitely a name that you need to be following. Kathy Wood, I think that everybody should have a name list. Say, hey, I want to know, what are these 15 names doing this year? If you have that list, if you don't, you should make one. Kathy Wood ought to be on it. Hmm. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into our intermission here. Yeah, we have and a then couple, Ethereum will be coming up after that, by the way. A couple super chats here, not a whole lot. Uh, we have one from Bill okay. Storm. 
saying, is there a way to keep the Lux Algo sensitivity and agility across multiple time frames? If I change it on the four hourly and flip to the one hourly, I lose my one hourly settings. Absolutely, yeah, jump onto my screen real quick and I'll help you out with that. So Lux Algo, what I have found, I've done a lot of experiment, uh, experimentation with this. I have found putting it on autopilot is probably the, uh, excuse me, I, I, I found keeping it on 12 and 26 mm -hmm. is pretty useful. Signal sensitivity 12 and then uh, confirmation signals agility 26. I've personally found, and there's different um, there's different strategies that Lux Algo themselves, I mean, if you come over here and you go to Lux Algo, you go to, I think it's resources and guides, they're going to give you, I mean, look at this, guys. Jump on my screen if we're not there. There are a ton of different tutorials over here. This is why I haven't done any tutorials on Lux Algo, really. I've done one in CT2A, but for the most part, they've got great tutorials over here. They talk about over here, I forget exactly where it is, they talk about setting up Lux Algo Premium with the different uh, the candle settings and everything, not candle settings, it's over here in uh, signals mode, I think. They talk about all of this over here in Lux Algo and about what you should set it up in. Personally, I found 1226 is the best, but there are different strategies strategies that you can utilize. And they also have a Discord server where you can go in and talk to other people that use Lux Algo and get their opinion. Didn't I didn't even bring that up for the point of a sales pitch, but I had to answer that question. Great question. I use 1226. Full screen. All right, we have another one from... Uh... Guido Pele, uh, coincidence that the total market cap hit $3.01 just before the pullback? No, I don't think that's a coincidence at all. I didn't know it did that, but if it did, then that makes a lot of sense. Uh, no, it did, actually. I'm looking at it right now. The reason that that makes a whole lot of sense, and I've seen this happen many times, according to my chart, I can only see it hit about 2.9, but markets use, uh, no, it did hit uh, $2,968,000,000. That makes a whole lot of sense, and the reason is market capitalization charts you can do technical analysis on similarly to how you can do on Bitcoin. Uh, back when we first hit $20,000 on Bitcoin, market cap topped out right at around $800 billion. Um, back in the day, earlier this year, we hit $2.5 trillion market cap. Market capitalization psychological levels of resistance and support are actually very important. You definitely want to pay attention to them. We talk about them every once in a while when they're relevant. We, we, we had a uh, just a donation... Not quite sure what the currency is. It's a hundred of it, uh, but the name is fun. Van Lalach Han Hima Ralte. And no comment. I think it was a cross symbol, a cross emoji, but just wanted to donate. So thank you so much. Well, thank you very much for your donation. That well, is all of the questions I saw in a super we chat. We saw, but, a, great, but, I saw a great question up here, and I can't remember what it was. There was a really good question, and I'm trying to find it. I saw I saw a good one that I wanted to ask you because I think it's been a minute since we've actually discussed this, but somebody tagged uh, me, you, and I think even Kelly, and asked, "Does Jeb have a list of books he recommends?" Uh, oh yeah, I have a bunch of them. If you're in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, I'm gonna give you exactly one, and the reason I'm gonna give you one is because I don't want you getting confused on which ones you should read. I've got a few others. Um, the first one and the main one that you need to read if you haven't read this is called The Bitcoin Standard. It's by Safadian Amos. If you haven't read that, it is, um, <laughs> I was about to say the gospel of Bitcoin, but I'm not going to compare it to that. It is a very important book, and it is like the, uh, it, it's the book that you need to read if you're new to cryptocurrency. If you haven't read that, there's an, if you have read that, there's another book on technical analysis, and I'm blanking on its name. It's a book that I read earlier this year, and it was actually published in 1950. Um, if I can remember what it is, I'll post a picture of it on my Twitter. Um, but that's another good book to read. The main thing that I would do, guys, is read the Bitcoin Standard. There's a few others. Safadian almost has written some, but I would focus on the Bitcoin Standard. If you guys would like, we want to start doing more kind of timeless content. I can do a like a little uh, Bitcoin book club video if you guys would like and talk about like my five favorite books to read for cryptocurrency. Um, give us a one in chat if you'd like to see that. And by the way, smash that yeah. like button. Let's see if we can get to 1,500 likes. Thank you guys for tuning in. No, that book, that book is phenomenal, and I'll tell you even more about the reason why you should read it and recommend it to other people. Because I would assume most of the people watching here, you guys are in. You know your why. You know why Bitcoin and crypto is the future. But it'll give you the education you need to even reinforce and cement that why. But if you have any family members, any friends, anything that is kind of like, they kind of look at you sideways when you talk about your investments yeah, in crypto. You'll understand how to when talk to them. When you read this book, it'll it will open give your you eyes. the urgency and you'll be able to talk to them about things and get them to understand the why of crypto. Yeah, like it. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. Well, I was just saying, until humans have a why mm -hmm. to do anything, yep. we do not put all of ourselves into it. So it's really easy to, to put a little bit of money here and there and just see what happens. But when people read this book, this is what causes people to say, 
I'm not playing around anymore with my I'm money. I'm dead serious about I'm Bitcoin I'm going to start now. being smart from here Yeah, on. And, that, and by the way, another book you ought to read is uh, Start With Why by Simon Sinek. That's yeah. where we ha learned a lot about why. The question that I remember that I was trying that I was trying to remember is by Ken Saunders. He asked, Jeb, what watch do you wear? I'm wearing a Vincero. We're actually, they're actually a, a, a partner of the channel now. So make sure to check out Vincero.com. Um, we don't even have an affiliate link with them right now in the description. So, but check them out anyway. It's a great company, great watches. I've told the story before how I crashed a motorcycle on one of those watches. Didn't even, I mean, completely survived the motorcycle accident unharmed tim's wearing one right now show him the show the audience that it's a beautiful watch guys yeah. we got some dope watches we got a vincero in the channel do we have any time i think we have time for like one more question even if it's not a super chat did you find the one because you said there was one that you really liked. i was trying to find the question on the vincero watch is what it was but i have um let's see let's see if there are any other good questions if not so, we, someone else said digital gold is a great book I uh, haven't heard of that one, but if it's called Digital Gold, it probably James, is. James Martinez recommends that one. And I, yeah. I've seen, I, don't, I haven't read it. I've definitely seen ads for it because when you're researching crypto all day, those are the ads they send you. Yeah, for real. But, uh, all right. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and jump back into some, uh, some technical, some technical. Let's go ahead and Technicals. jump into some technical analysis and figure out where Ethereum is going, guys. We've just talked about Bitcoin. We've also talked about, uh, we've talked about Elrond. We've talked about uh, AVAX. We've talked about Solana. Guys, we've also got a bunch more to talk about. We're going to talk about EOS here in a little bit. If you're enjoying today's stream, let us know in the chat. Drop some love in there. We really appreciate you guys tuning in. One of the first things we're going to do here, even before we jump into, into Ethereum's TA, is we're going to talk about the burning. The burning of Ethereum. If you guys don't remember because it happened, you know, back during the Ice Age, you know, three months ago because crypto moves fast, EIP-1559 has now burned more Ethereum than Ethereum miners hold. So far... About a million Ethereum, approximately $4.1 billion, have been permanently destroyed in just under four months, compared to a quarter million Ethereum, which is the current miner balance. Around 80,000 Ethereum is burnt daily, accounting for a 66.48% in a net reduction of circulating coins, according to Watch the Burn. Basically, what that means is not that Ethereum is deflationary. Ethereum is not deflationary. This is a fact. What it is, however, is a currency with lower inflation. So inflation on Ethereum, let's say it was at 10, whatever, it went down to 3, whatever. Whatever the metric is, it's gone down 66% because about 66% of the Ethereum that was being created is now being burned. Just a cool fact for any of you guys who remember that. But let's go ahead and take a look here at some basic technicals on Ethereum. We're going to run through this quickly because it's pretty similar to what it was showing last week. We talked about a couple weeks ago how it was at the top of this ascending wedge. A reckoning was coming. It needed to have a correction. Boom, it did. We talked about two different levels of support, 4,400 then also 4,000. It was probably going to bounce off of one of them. We bounced off of 4,000 right now. I think Ethereum has probably hit at least close to its bottom, but I think it bottoming out is going to depend on Bitcoin. When Bitcoin bottoms out, I think Ethereum is probably going to also. And the reason for that is very simple. Drop a one in chat if you've ever looked at coin market cap whenever a major top or a major bottom has been hit. You know, it's funny. On coin market cap, most of these little price action charts over here, the last seven days charts, these all look different normally. But whenever a market has a proper bottom or a proper top, every single one of them lines up. Every single one of them looks identical for about a day period. Every one of them. They look identical. Bitcoin has not had a, has not had a strong bottom yet. Therefore, Ethereum has not either. That means both of these markets are moving slightly differently. As soon as Bitcoin has a confirmed bottom, Ethereum is probably going to also because right now Bitcoin is leading this charge. Now, there is an argument to be made that Ethereum has bottomed out here on this uptrend and it's going to maintain that uptrend. But there's also another argument to be made that we've talked about before that this longer term uptrend that started back in March of last year is going to be touched as well. And it has a slightly different inclination. It has an inclination where uh, Ethereum could pull all the way back down to about $3,800, maybe $4,000. depends on where the market is, uh, how far and how long it takes to get there. But the point is we might have to come and test this support level as well. I think that that would actually be a good thing for Ethereum. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think the fundamentals on Ethereum are growing more bullish by the day. The fact that its inflation has slowed down is going to help with its supply and demand economics, which is going to allow the price to go higher. I do think a $10,000 Ethereum is around the corner. I was looking at my Coinbase the other day uh, when I was, I was minting some NFTs, Mojo Heads, by the way. Make sure to check those out. Um, and I was looking at my Coinbase, and I was like, gosh, I bought some Ethereum back when it was at $130, and I bought a lot of Ethereum back at $130. I'm super happy about that, but I do think it can go to five figures, and I think it's probably going to happen sooner than you might think. But let's take a look at Lux Algo here. First thing that jumps out at you, we are in a confirmed downtrend. Lux Oscillator looks like it's about to cross bearish and uh, move to the zero level. We also see that there is a red um, uh, bearish sell signal, and there is red trend catcher. 
But the thing that I want to remind you is similarly to Bitcoin, during the last pullback in September, Ethereum pulled back down to this uh, the bottom of the EQ cloud. So far, we've only pulled back to the top of the EQ cloud. That tells us that, yeah, we're bearish and yeah, we've kind of bottomed out. But similarly to how the EQ, uh, how the uh, uh, EQ, the oscillator, excuse me, down here went all the way down to 40, uh, 40 below, uh, down here to 40, we are probably going to want to see the same thing happen here because this correction looks very similar to what we saw in September. This market is also shouting at me, just going to be honest with you, that we have not yet hit our bottom and that there's a little bit more to go. Makes sense because it also looks like that on Bitcoin. Now, looking down here at the Ethereum chart on Luxalgo, it actually looks very similar to Bitcoin in the same way that we're not really going to take too much stock in this buy signal that we saw. Why? Because we are in a range rather than a trend. Uh, but what we can look at is that we're rejecting from the middle part of the market, the EQ cloud here on the four hourly chart. And that could mean that we're going further to the downside. So a lot of the TA that we saw on Bitcoin is, is the same that we're seeing on Ethereum. And essentially what it's telling us is that the bottom's close, but the bottom's not here yet. At least that's what I would say. With that said, we're also going to go ahead and look briefly into a snapshot at some other projects that you guys have shown interested in. Uh, interest in. The first one that we're going to look at is called HBAR. Hedera hash graph it is the one that you guys are always asking us about and we're going to quickly look through all of this and uh take a look at its technicals we're going to just jump through this really fast we're not going to go into too much detail the first thing i'm going to show you here is that h bar is in a pretty big rising trading channel and it is currently sitting at the bottom of that trading channel that makes me interested because it is an early warning sign that we might be looking at a local bottom but even before we get into that let's just take a look at it over here on coin market count uh hedera is sitting at rank number 38 sitting at 37 cents you can see it's been trending to the downside over the last several days it's at 37 cents right now less than a week ago is sitting at 40. let's take a look at the rsi remember what we said earlier about trying to get a good deal are we getting a good deal right now on HBAR? Well, in this case, the RSI is sitting down here around 44. Okay, cool. Could this mean that the bottom is in? It might. It means that we might be close to the bottom. Here's the problem. There was a massive spinning top that came in on this market yesterday. That indicates that there's indecision. That is not generally what you want to see when you're trying to look for a bottom, especially if the candlestick and the body is red. I think that the bottom could be close for HBAR, but I'm not confident that it's in yet. Just speaking honestly, I think that it is probably going to have a good buying opportunity relatively soon. But I think you might want to wait for just a little bit better of a deal before you jump too much headlong into that. Now, let's go ahead and take a, take a look at Kadena. You guys are always asking about this project. This is another one of those that you guys are really much, uh, really in love with, it seems like. It's sitting at 59. It's at $18. It's got a $3 billion market cap and it's up 2% over the last couple of days. But the first thing that you're going to notice on Kadena is that it is currently in a massive flag. We actually talked about this a little while ago and we discussed how Kadena uh, looks like it's in a massive price discovery movement. And the problem here is that it's difficult to do technical analysis on a market that's in price discovery because it generally just ignores the TA. The one of the most important parts of technical analysis is to know the limitations of technical analysis. In fact, I, I've talked about that quite a bit over, over the time that we've been running the channel here for the last over four years now. If you don't know the limitations of technical analysis, then you're not going to know the best way to apply technical analysis. One of the limitations of TA right now in this market is that it shows that we're overextended. It shows you're getting a bad deal. Even Lux Algo is showing, hey, look, this market is in correction. It's sitting up here at this massive uh, high. It's sitting up here in the reversal zone. The EQ cloud got so wide that it dipped into the reversal zone. That almost that never happens. I've literally never seen that happen. The problem is, if this market has the hype behind it, which it does then the TA can say whatever it wants, but it could just keep going up. So what I'm going to tell you here is that this project right now is probably not being led by its fundamental, uh, excuse me, by its technicals. It's probably being led by its fundamentals. The fundamentals and the community behind it seems to be very strong. So I'm not going to recommend buying it because I think it's dangerous to buy it when it's just rallied a couple thousand percent. But I'm also not going to knock it because the fundamentals could carry this thing a lot farther. That's my opinion on that. Now, let's take a look at another project called EOS. This is a project that I remember doing a lot of analysis on back in the day because EOS was actually a holding of mine for a while. This is one of those projects that's sitting at rank number 47 that used to be in the all-time high. And one of the points I want to make about this, guys, whenever you see a project that has been around for a while and used to be in the top 10 and is not anymore, that should be a red flag. Why? Well, quite simply, if the market, if the project was in the top 10, and it's not anymore, it means it got left behind. And whatever it was doing is probably not able to keep up. 
EOS is a smart contract platform. It does have a lot going on. And at one point, it was probably the hottest project in crypto. At one point, the community around EOS was more fervent than the community around Bitcoin. A lot of people are wondering, hey, should I invest in EOS? Is EOS a good project? I think EOS has decent fundamentals, but I'll be honest with you, I also haven't seen much out of the fundamentals in the last three years. I haven't heard a lot about it. I haven't heard a lot of developments. I haven't heard a lot of people building da uh, dApps on it. This was one of the first projects that people were building decentralized applications on. It and NEO were some of the first. In fact, they kind of preceded Ethereum in a lot of ways. The problem is everybody has decentralized applications now. The problem is everybody has smart contracts now. And the kid that's new on the block is probably the one that's going to get all the attention. The AVAXs of the world, the Binances of the world, the Solanas of the world, the Cardanos of the world, they're the ones getting all the attention. So I just encourage you to know that no matter how good the fundamentals are on EOS, and I haven't seen much about the fundamentals, so I'm not going to argue that they are good, I'd be careful about investing in that. Now, trading it is a different story. There's always trade opportunities, even on dead projects. Right now, EOS is in a massive symmetrical triangle pattern and is sitting down here on top of the support. Is right now a good time to buy? Maybe. You could argue that it's going to come up to this downtrending level of resistance. But I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm not trying to be a hater on EOS. I think that there are potentials to make trades on it, but I think you're going to get even better uh, opportunities in other markets. Should you invest in EOS? I don't think it's a good idea personally. Is there a trade on EOS? Maybe, but there's probably a better trade elsewhere. With that said, we're going to move into our conclusion. But first, Tim, are there any super chats that we need to get out of the way? Yeah, we have a couple here. Uh, let me see. We got two. So Daryl G said, why do prices go down if the outflows are up? Supply over demand. Supply and demand is a very long-term mover. So if you're looking at uh, outflows, you're typically looking at a very long-term metric. You're looking at something that's going to have large, uh, uh, long-term pronounced effects on the market, but it's going to take time for those effects to come into play. It's not necessarily something that's going to affect the market today. If you're looking at something that is much shorter term, like the volume or like a news story or like a launch, then that is probably going to have that day uh, impact. Yeah, it's probably going to impact the market that day. Uh, inflows, outflows are typically things that are going to have much longer term outlooks. So when we talk about outflows on Bitcoin, that's something that's going to have a pronounced impact over the next month, but it might not today. Good right. question. Really good question. Yeah, we got another one from Eye of the Beholder saying ETH has had periods where it's more where more is being burned than is being mined. I believe there have been periods where that's happened. In general, that's not the way it's happened. But uh, at times of high activity, I believe we have seen times where Ethereum has dipped into technically deflation. Yeah. In general, though, it is still inflationary. That's all of our, that's all our super chats. Cool. So, yeah. Well, Tim. Yes. Where do you think Bitcoin's bottom is? Let's just jump straight into that. Yeah. So, you know, I was doing TI on that this morning, and I have a range that is probably not, you know, the range that everyone wants to see because it's, decently large and it what it really depends on is what day we actually decide to come down and touch that rising level of support so if we touch it today which i would not put a lot of stock in i don't think that that's necessarily going to happen but let's say it did I'll show the chart uh it would be somewhere around fifty three thousand six hundred. You it, think the bottom somewhere in the fifty three thousand area obviously everyone's level of support is going to look a little bit different than mine but i'm just using my chart yeah uh somewhere in the region of 53 you know if, if we hold off a couple days from now. So what what day is Thanksgiving? What's the, tw the, the 25th? 25th. All right. So if we held off till Thanksgiving, because I do think that we're going to see a small rally on, you know, right after Thanksgiving. Yeah. So we held off till the 25th. My range is sitting a little bit closer to 55, 300. If we don't hit it by then, I do think we'll see a small rally. And then it's going to be next week when we have to come down and touch this line. But as a whole, I'm looking anywhere between the prices of 53 to as high as 58. But I do think we're going to touch that level of support sometime in that region. So at the end of the day, when, I think people psychologically want us to say we already hit the bottom. And I feel you. I hear you. But actually, when you really think about it, especially if you have anything to buy, if you, if you don't have anything left to buy, it doesn't really matter because it's going to rally. Just hold, sit tight, get ready. Yeah. But if you have some money ready to buy, Be you're going to kind of root for it to go ahead and yeah. go down to 53. Yeah, get, get, get a better deal. Heck yeah. No, I believe me, I wish Ethereum was still at $130 so I could buy well, No, I'm talking about Ethereum. Ethereum. I wish Ethereum was back yeah. at $137.42 where I bought 
several Ethereum back in the day. I wish it would go down there so I could buy a ton of it. You know how much Ethereum yeah. I would buy if it was at a, I wish I had bought like 500 Ethereum back then. I'm hitting myself. Don't hit yourself in the future. Buy some Bitcoin if it gets on a good deal. Don't get freaked out because, oh no, the next two days it might go down a little bit more. Be excited because in the next two years, God knows how far it could go. I'm not telling you to FOMO. I'm not telling you yeah. to be irrational, but I am telling you to make sure that you keep your perspective long term because that will be the thing that will guide you you know what at the end of the day the uh, when you when you're concerned about the price dipping that communicates that your brain still functions in the way of how many u.s dollars can i acquire mm -hmm. through the way of bitcoin stack him sacks. that's what your brain is saying so if you are afraid of a price drop your brain is communicating man i'm losing u.s dollars we are moving to a world where your brain needs to shift. This is something Peter Brandt talked about back in, I think, March. He had to go through this thing where his brain switched to how much Bitcoin can I get by way of the U.S. dollar? Yep. In which case, when the price goes down, that is the most glorious thing in the world mm -hmm. because that means, man, Bitcoin just went on sale. And so I challenge all of you guys to continue to work your brain into that spot of low prices equals good things. I still want it to go up long term so that my value goes up, but I'm okay with short term drops in price yep. because that's a sale for me yep. to acquire more Bitcoin. Absolutely. Well, let me ask you this, Tim, and because I completely agree with all that. Everybody's asking in chat about Plan B's prediction: 98k yeah. by the end of the month. Yeah. Do you think it could still happen? Yeah. Man, he He's got eight days left. Yeah. Oh, gosh. What sound effect His, did he play? He played the like the loopy like. Oh my uh, gosh. The, the, the sad sound. Oh. Uh, wah, wah, listen, wah. Plan B did. He's been doing a great job. He's just he's probably that, wrong. We something still have days. you're never gonna have something happy happen with. Listen, you were doing a great job. <laughs> he, listen, he got went three months right in a row. Yeah, no, he did. And, and he, like, here's within a thousand dollars. We might just be delayed, and then who's gonna get? I don't. Does he? Has he already given a December prediction? Well, he gave yeah, that it a while was ago. It was yeah, hundred five k. Yeah, hundred five. Which is not happening. Thirty five. I don't think we're hitting hundred thirty five. His prediction that he Ooh. set months ago was 135. But, but here's the happening. thing. I, I you know, yeah, he might was happen. wrong about this one. A lot of us were convinced that 98 was going to happen by the end of November because there was a lot of signs pointing it. Things changed. Fundamentals changed. News changed. Uh, it looked, there were some things that we were expecting to happen that never happened. So on the same side, well, I don't think he's going to be right about the end of November. I don't think we're going to be at 98K. Let's look at what happens in December. We are still a couple news stories and a couple things of... Uh, adoption happening away from having a massive explosion because i actually still believe there are billions and billions of dollars sitting and waiting for the right moment and who knows if that moment comes in a couple of days a couple of weeks maybe a month or two but i do still i'm waiting for that day i think i think we will see a day here in the next little bit where bitcoin jumps by like 30 to 40 percent in one day and then continues a massive rally i think so when we, we've been talking about we've had some big candles recently big daily candles big weekly candles I don't think we've even started to to see how big of the candles we're actually going to be creating here in the future. Well, you heard it here first, folks. Guys, the Bitcoin bottom is close, but it's probably not in yet. We would love to hear your opinion on that in the chat and in the comment section. But that's all we got for you today. Before we go, I do want to mention, as I said, today's show is brought to you by Lux Algo's Lifetime Sale. You can check that out down below. $9.97. It's worth every penny. If you're a professional trader, this is going to allow you to have it for life instead of having to pay $67 bucks a month. You are going to make your money back if you really do believe in Lux Algo. We really believe in Lux Algo. And if I didn't already have it, I would be jumping at this opportunity because that is going to save you a lot of money. Even jokes here, save infinity because you don't have to pay for life because you got lifetime membership. So make sure to check that out. And also don't forget that we are still doing the Mojo Heads NFT giveaway. I minted my two Mojo Heads and I posted a picture on Twitter. Really excited about these NFTs. If you drop a uh, uh, if you check out the link in the description box down below, you can follow me on Twitter to enter to win an NFT. By the way, guys, these NFTs, the floor, the floor price right now is 0.15 Ethereum. So the floor price is about $700. So winning one of these NFTs is a pretty big deal. And these NFTs, honestly, I think are probably going to be worth half an Ethereum or more in the next several months as more mints happen, as more people get interested in Mojo Heads. It's a really good project. Make sure to check that out down below below. Anyway, guys, that's all we got for you today. Make sure to tune in because we got some more content coming out later today. We got some stuff coming out on Twitter. We got some really cool stuff coming out this weekend. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and make sure to check out all the affiliate links and everything down below because it helps to support this channel. Hit that like button if you haven't already. But that's all we got for you today. Before I go, I do just first want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching as always. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Oh, I got a real good feeling.